Have you ever went down in Dead by Daylight and say, What can I do? I can't do anything. I can't fuck like, bro, man. Well, today, I'm going to show you what you can do. We're going to go over four types of tiles and what you can do to extend your chases so you don't end up on the ground 45 seconds into your game. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please make sure to drop a comment below and let me know if I should continue to make educational videos. The first tile we're going to be going over is the Killer Shack. The biggest problem I see with survivors looping at the Killer Shack is not entering the shack through the right entrance. The entrance of the Killer Shack without the pallet has a longer distance than the entrance with the pallet, meaning if the killer decides to vault the window, which takes 1.7 seconds, that's an extra 1.7 seconds for you to gain distance to vault the window again. Another reason why it's best to take the longer entrance is because the longer the loop, the harder it is for the killer to double back, giving you, the survivor, more time to react and make your next move. Killer Shack is arguably the best tile in every Dead by Daylight match, meaning you should take full advantage of it every game you play. The best way to do this is never drop Shack Pallet unless the window's blocked, you're already too hooked, or the game's almost over. Shack Pallet is super strong and many of your teammates are going to rely on it as well, so always try to vault the window three times until it blocks, then move to the next loop. Our next tile is Gyms. If you guys have played on the map suffocation pit, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say these tiles are absolutely disgusting. The chases you can go on by utilizing these gyms are crazy. There's a few types of gyms such as the Jungle Gym, Short Wall Gym, and the Imposter Gym. Honestly, for the sake of this video, we don't need to entirely go into depth with what you need to do for each gym because they all follow the same rule. Run through the pallet, vault the window. Run through the pallet, vault the window. Or vice versa. Some windows may be on your left, while some may be on your right. Depends on which gym you're looping. All you really need to do when looping the gyms is use this method, but also read and react to the killer's actions. If the killer follows you through the pallet, vault the window. If he doubles back to cut you off from the window, you double back as well and utilize the pallet. Pretty simple. The next tile we're going to go over is TNL walls. For most survivors, this tile is a dead zone to them, and they give up mentally before even getting to the loop. This tile is definitely not a dead zone and can be put to really good use if looped properly. Always enter the TNL wall from the inside. After vaulting the T window, look for the killer's red light. If they follow you from the outside, you run to the L. If they follow you from the inside, continue to loop the T, and vice versa. If the killer vaults the window, keep running from the T to the L by vaulting from the inside. TNL walls may seem intimidating and hard to loop at first, but practice does make perfect. Well, almost perfect because we know how DVD games go. Dead on! No! Just try to use the tips I give you and combo the TNL wall with another tile like the hay bale or a truck with a pallet and you're chilling. The best thing you can do with lots of loops around is utilize the window before hucking pallets over like a damn lumberjack. And for the last tile we're going to cover, edge tiles slash miscellaneous. These tiles are random loops laid out around the map as fillers, such as cars, trucks, debris, or even a tree. The number one mistake I see Dead by Daylight players make, even high MMR survivors, is not leaving the tile. The loop is only good for so long, bro. Either your window gets blocked, you drop the pallet, the killer bloodlusts you so much that he can smell your toe jam in between your feet. <laughs> Eventually, you gotta move to the next tile. When using small tiles like this, you have to be quick at reacting. One second late on a double back and you're dead. But this also goes both ways. If the killer keeps making small mistakes, you can damn near do an infinite on a car. Just hold W and keep tapping your direction keys when turning around corners. Doing this will make your turns as sharp as possible. This allows you to make it around the tiles as quickly as possible. And because the killer's in first person, well, except Chucky, they won't be able to see their feet and how close they are to cutting corners. Use this and reaction time to prolong a small loop into a long chase. And remember, be aware of your surroundings and leave the loop for something else when you can. Alright, with all these tips, you should now be the LeBron James of Dead by Daylight. But you're still gonna die to the killer, which is Michael Jordan. <laughs> Let me know if this video helped you in your looping experience. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and stay safe. Peace. But this time, something is different. The answer lies just out of reach. Shut up, nigga! God damn, yapping, yapper fucking doodle, yapper fucking doodle. Every time I get on this goddamn game, just fucking yap sessions going on.